So today we're checking out a new tablet from Lenovo. This time the Tab P11 Gen 2. I didn't realize it, but it comes with the Precision Pen 2 2023 version. Current price for this version is $289 in the United States. I'll leave a link with current pricing and more information down in the description below. <laughs> Some of the specs on here, it has an 11.5 inch IPS display, 2000 by 1200 resolution, 400 nits brightness. We got a MediaTek Helio G99 processor in this one, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. Also comes with Android 12L, upgradable to Android 14. It comes with a 7700 milliamp hour battery. They're advertising up to 10 hours of video playback. I'll definitely be testing that out later in the video. As far as the camera, cameras go, you've got an 8 megapixel front facing lens, 13 megapixel on the back. Surprisingly, inside the box, they do include a 20 watt wall adapter and a USB-C to USB-A charging cable. You get your micro SD card removal tool. Not sure how large you can go up to. I'm guessing one terabyte. Of course, safety, warranty, and quick start guide. You can see here the Precision Pen 2 has two buttons there on the side, charging there on the end. I actually just did a video on this pen recently, so it's nice that they're including this with the tablet. Only thing is I don't believe you can connect this to the tablet unless you get one of their cases that has a slot for this. Okay, it looks pretty similar to other Lenovo tablets that I've reviewed. Sort of a metal material and then plastic with a soft touch material on it. The camera on the back looks a little bit different though volume buttons and your micro SD card slot there on the right hand side. Surprisingly, this still has a headphone jack and then you get your USB-C there at the bottom with two speakers on each side. So this should sound pretty good. Okay, it looks like a little bit different startup here. It appears to have pretty slim bezels here all the way around the edges. Nice thing is with this kind of pen, you don't really have to pair it with the tablet. It just kind of works automatically. Also when setting up, you got the option of face unlock, pattern pin, and password. And then it's gonna have most of your basic stuff like the Google Assistant. And it looks like you've got Google Pay on here as well. YouTube Music. Looks like you've still got the choice of gesture navigation or three button. Okay, pretty nice looking wallpaper here. Pretty nice looking lock screen on here as well. It looks sort of like you've got a dock down here at the bottom. You've also got a recent apps button here. Left of the home screen, you are going to have the Google Entertainment Space, where it gives you stuff to watch, games to play, books to read, or stuff to listen to. You'll also notice you have the taskbar down at the bottom, which is going to be somewhat similar to what you see on Samsung tablets. You've also got your apps button there as well, and your navigation buttons are over in the corner. You do have a few options here in the home settings, but I don't see anything where you can turn off the taskbar if you don't want that on there. Swipe up anywhere to access all of your apps. Doesn't look like they put a lot of extra ones on here, mainly the ones from Google, and then a couple here from Lenovo. Over here on the side, you've got your pen tools. You've also got your screenshot, pointer and magnifying glass. And then a handful of other things you can do here with the Precision Pen 2. As you can see, it's not going to be perfect for writing, but I feel like it's still a decent option to have on a tablet like this. Now when you swipe down on the left hand side, you're going to get the notification shade. Swipe down on the right hand side and you'll get all your shortcuts that you normally see like internet, Bluetooth, auto rotate, dark theme. Surprisingly, this one also has productivity mode, smart rotate, screenshot, screen record, nearby share. And it looks like you can add quite a bit of other stuff here like auto brightness, airplane mode, eye protection, location, battery saver, screencast, flashlight, mic and camera access, do not disturb, alarm, data saver, invert colors, extra dim. I might want to move that up. Storage, focus mode, and bedtime mode. It is a little hard to see down here with this dark background. You can see the display itself actually looks really nice in here. As far as storage goes, it's using about 17 gigabytes of the 64 gigabytes available. They've also got a few settings here for the Precision Pen 2, such as showing the memo ball, quick new note when you press and hold the top button. You can also turn on the writing sound so it sounds like you're writing on paper. And like I said earlier, the screen on here just looks really nice. If you're wondering, this does have Wide Vine L1, so you can watch full HD playback resolution on apps like Netflix. You can watch up to 1440p resolution on YouTube videos as well. Split screen seems to work pretty good on here as well. 
And besides adjusting it there in the middle, you can also double tap it to kind of switch what's on the top and bottom. This also has a connection down there at the bottom for the official keyboard attachment, or you can just use any Bluetooth keyboard. This one here is from Logitech, but there's several other options out there. You can also turn on your productivity mode, which I'm not sure if it's really that beneficial considering now you have the taskbar down at the bottom. But again, sort of like Samsung, where you have the option of two different layouts. Maybe not quite as polished as Samsung Dex, but still a nice option to have. It's also a little easier to use floating windows to do some multitasking as well. As you can see here, the performance on this tablet, it's a little bit better than the Tab P11 Plus in the regular Tab P11 first generation. Sort of the performance you would expect on a tablet in this category. I'll have to use this a little bit more, but so far not too bad compared to others that I've tested. And then when it comes to gaming, it's not going to be the best graphics or the highest frame rates, but it does a fairly good job when I tested PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9. Everything seems fairly smooth but does have a little more jagged edges on the graphics. I do think most people will enjoy gaming on here though. Just keep in mind, this is not considered a gaming tablet and is probably gonna struggle with some of the more intense games. Now when it comes to battery life on here, this one lasted seven hours before dying at 100% screen brightness. So a little above average when compared to other tablets I've tested. Downside is this one can take a while to charge, about two and a half hours. Now even though this does have a headphone jack, the speakers on each side are actually really nice. Plenty loud enough in my opinion. Let me give you a quick sample just to give you an idea of what they sound like. And then inside the camera app, looks pretty simple here. You've got camera, video, AI scan. Looks like you've got the option of 1080p resolution for video recording. Really fast shutter speed on here though. Pretty nice detail, at least in my studio lighting. Let me give you a few quick samples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what to expect. Now photo and video quality, not quite as good as in my studio lighting, but that's to be expected on a tablet like this. As long as you have good lighting, I feel like you could use this in a pinch. Overall though, I feel like this is a pretty nice minimal upgrade from the previous P11 and P11 Plus. It's good to see they kept the headphone jack. It's got good screen quality. And I'll have to compare this to some of my other tablets to see how it stacks up. But this could be one of the better options out there if you're looking for a budget tablet. I also have a couple more new Lenovo tablets I'll be reviewing soon so you'll want to look out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.